Hey guys, it's Shannon, otherwise known as The Girls Got Soul. I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. And if you would, if you would please hit that like button, and most of all, if you please hit subscribe, I would really appreciate it, and that will keep you notified whenever I post a new video. Um, if you guys would like to check me out on the World Wide Web, if you guys are not so much a YouTuber, um, I do run a blog, and that was actually where The Girls Got Soul originated. It's girlsgotsoul.com. Uh, and you can check that out. I'm posting all kinds of running stuff, health stuff, fitness stuff, and I'm posting my true crime with Shannon stuff there now as well. If you're interested in true crime, you can check that out. And also I have a true crime uh, channel here on YouTube and I will link to that in the uh, show information. With that all said and done, let's get into today's video. This one is about this week, this past weekend's uh, Brooklyn Half Marathon. It was a hot one I heard y'all. It was a hot one. Um, there's a really sad something that happened though, and I'm actually going to be uh, referencing the New York Post. While there, I know they're usually a little bit controversial with their news, it, it, they actually did some pretty good coverage on this particular uh, event situation. Uh, runner who died in Brooklyn Half Marathon heat ID'd as David Reichman. Now, I do find that headline to be a little misleading because we don't really know that yet. Now, okay. The Brooklyn Half Marathon runner who died Saturday while finishing the race amid sweltering heat has been identified as Flatbush resident David Reichman. Reichman, who was 32, collapsed on the boardwalk at Ocean Parkway at Brighton Beach Avenue near the finish line after suffering from possible cardiac arrest, according to the event organization, the New York Road Runners Club and NYPD. Reichman was rushed to Coney Island Hospital, where he was pronounced dead, according to the NYPD. The medical examiner will determine the cause of death. The 22,000 runner race, yeah, this was a big one, y'all, from the Brooklyn Museum through Prospect Park to Coney Island Boardwalk was held on an unseasonably hot and humid day. The temperature at 9 a.m. at Coney Island was already 70 degrees with 83% humidity, according to Fox Weather. The event was held in person for the first time since the pandemic started. Saturday's death marked the first fatality in the race since 2014. That's when a 31-year-old runner fell to the ground after crossing the finish line. The FDNY said 16 race participants were taken to the hospital after the race, including the man who died and four others who suffered serious injuries. One police officer told the Post Saturday that four other people collapsed near the end of the race. Maybe an organizer or health official should have called it because of the conditions, the cop said. In a statement released Saturday, New York Roadrunners said it had medical staff placed from start to finish throughout the race course, who are ready to respond immediately to the medical needs of all runners, spectators, volunteers, and staff. The health and safety of our runners, volunteers, partners, and staff remain the top priority for New York Roadrunners, the group said, in coordination and consultation with the city agency partners and weather experts. The NYRR was closely monitoring weather conditions leading up to and during the race. Okay. Well, first off, my condolences to the Rickman family of David Rickman. Um, that's, it's awful. I can't imagine what his family's dealing with right now. 32 is just too young and he's a runner. So my, my condolences are with the family at this time. That said, a lot of folks are wondering, you know, why New York Roadrunners didn't call it off. That I can't answer for you. However, um, there was an email that went out to all the participants registered for Saturday's race by the New York Roadrunners. Um, one of my friends who ran on Saturday forwarded that to me. So I'm going to read that to you guys since if you did not run the race, this is not something you'd be aware of. Attention RBC Brooklyn Half Runners. Saturday's forecast shows high heat and humidity. In addition to our water stations and medical aid stations on course, we will have misting stations available throughout the course and ice towels will be available in the post race finish area. Sounds like that's pretty good, you know. Uh, and let's continue. Here are some tips to stay safe in the heat from our New York Roadrunner coaches. Hydrate before, during, and after the race. You think that's common sense, but you got to remind everybody to do that. Um, don't go out too fast. Respect your limits and adjust your pace accordingly. 
I actually think that those two are a problem that happened on Saturday, but I'll get more into that in a second. Wear light fabrics and protect yourself from the sun by wearing a hat with a brim and running in the shade where possible. New York Roadrunners has implemented a color-coded event alert system, EAS, for our races that will communicate the status of the course conditions on race day. Low is green, moderate is yellow, high is red, and extreme is black. These are based on the weather and other course conditions. On race day, the current EAS status will be communicated via color-coded flags at the start and finish areas and along the course at each medical station. All participants should familiarize themselves with the EAS prior to the race and remain alert for directions from race officials and take precautions to prepare properly for varying weather or course conditions on race day. For more information on staying safe while running in hot weather, please visit newyorkrowrunners.org backslash heat. So they're giving uh, the runners also some further information on preparing for the heat. Now, getting back to what they stated about not going out too fast and adjusting your pace. If you've ever run in the heat a lot, which I know a lot of runners have, but I'm, I'm a Central Florida runner, and we run in the heat most of the year. And I realized that the heat in New York is a little bit different. It's more of a thick kind of foggy type of thing. But we deal with really bad heat and humidity here in uh, Central Florida. You know, you, you really can't go out too slow in the heat. <laughs> I know that's crazy. But in that kind of conditions, you should not be going out there to try to do a PR or win something. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, fo I suppose the folks at the front, you know, that's up to them. But for the most part, most folks, you should slow down. I mean, and there's actually a, um, a chart for that. And I'm going to post the link um, as well in the uh, show information. And you got to respect your limits and adjust your pace accordingly. Again, you got to slow down for the heat. And that chart's going to tell you. There's a, some, there's a uh, formula for that, and you really do need to follow it. And uh, as, a, as a run coach and my coach, Jeff Galloway, it's vital. And that's what we do when we train in the summer here in Florida. I mean, we're always slowing down. I mean, even though it's hard to slow down sometimes, you really can't run too slow in the heat. It, I know it can be hard, but you really do need to slow down. It's, it's for your health. Now, do we think that New York Road Runners should have should have uh, canceled the race or what have you. I don't know. I mean, I don't think, you know, 20,000 something people would have been too happy with that. I mean, they did consult the weather people in the city and they decided to go. I think that it also a lot of responsibility relies on each participant or runner. You have to decide for yourself, is it okay for me to run? Do I feel okay? Am I well hydrated? Uh, am I ready? Do, am I wearing the right clothes? All that sort of stuff. And even if you do start and then you don't feel right, you feel like you're overheated, you need to know it's okay to stop. It's okay to not finish. You know, I know that we all don't like to DNR race, you know, uh, DNF, excuse me, DNF a race, but sometimes it's okay. And it's, it, a one race is not worth your health or your life. It's really not. So if you had to cut out you know, halfway in or mile seven or eight, it's okay. You can, you can do that. And it's nothing wrong with that. And as far as the folks I spoke to, every single one of them felt like New York Row Runners did an amazing job. They prepared them ahead of time. They had everything stocked out there. There was plenty of medical personnel. There was plenty of water. There was ice towels, misting stations. They really did felt like, you know, it was awfully hot. I mean, the conditions, you know, really sucked, but they really did feel like they were prepared. And most of them said they slowed down. And uh, one friend actually told me that he was in one of the corrals before the start and he heard a few runners having a talk about trying to go out, you know, faster so they can get done. Oh, that is the wrong way to think about it. So I hope that they're okay. And I hope that they're not, you know, one of those ones that suffered a heat stroke on that one. So, you know, what do you guys think about you know what happened uh, at the Brooklyn Half Marathon on Saturday. Do you think that they should have canceled the race? I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, so you can let me know. Do you think that a lot of it does rely on the runner? You know, it's something that they have to decide for themselves. Let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, yeah, I would really like to hear it because I mean, it's to make a good discussion. And with the summer now hitting us, we really do need to uh, learn how to get ourselves keeping safe in that heat. So. Uh, Anyway, that is today's uh, video. 
And I want to thank you guys for checking out the channel. And again, if you would hit that red subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. And uh, you guys, uh, please stay safe out there and stay hydrated.